Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Satan is uh, uh, the prince of darkness. So, this Bible study is going to be on attributes of Satan, also known as the serpent, the dragon, the devil, Lucifer. Eh, he's got a few names, you know. When you open up your King James Bible to Genesis 1, chapter 1, and verse 1, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So, God is the creator. Now, in um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, we read, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It was very good. Not just good, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. All right, let's go to turn the page. Genesis chapter 2. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Now, why did God rest? Uh, was he tired? Whew, man, making all that stuff. Whew, six days. Boy, that was a lot of work. I'm exhausted. I'm bushed. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, God was setting an example for his creation, man, Adam, who was made in his image. God wanted us to work six days and then rest on the seventh and to reflect upon everything that the Lord had done. So, verse 2. And on the seventh day, God rest, uh, ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So, in six days, God created everything. And then on the seventh day, he rested. And the punchline is, on the sixth day, he looked at everything and he said it was very good. Now, there's, to my knowledge, there's not a day when the Lord said he created the angels. From what I understand, the angels were created prior to the earth. But you got to realize something. The Bible is the book of Adam, Adam kind. And Adam is actually a racial description. It's not the book of the angels. It's not the book of Satan. No, they're mentioned. I mean, if you did a book on your family history, you might mention, oh, well, yeah, I listened to Chaplain Bob, and there were some things I liked about him, and then there's some things I don't like about him. I think he's full of full of it on a few things, but, uh, you know, you might mention me, but I'm not, you know, am I part of your physical human family? No. Same thing with Satan. Satan's mentioned, we're warned, but, uh, you know, he's not part of the Adamic family of Adam. All right, let's take a look at verse 2, uh, 7. Or, yeah. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So the earth was created prior to Adam being formed. Okay? 
not born. The earth came before Adam. Very important point. Keep that in mind. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. When you look into the breathed, that's a very interesting word. Um, wind, breath, and spirit are all from the same root word. As in, you know, spirit of God, Holy Spirit, uh, spirit of man with a small s as opposed to a large s for Holy Spirit. And in the Greek, the word wind, breath, and spirit comes from the word pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, which is where they get the word uh, pneumatic. Have you ever heard of pneumatic tools? Air tools. You ever go to a tire shop? They used air tools instead of uh, electrical tools. Sometimes when you're dealing with a, a wet environment, they will use air tools because water will conduct electricity and it's not safe to run extension cords in, you know, through water. Not a good idea. So air tools are relatively safer. So pneumatic tools, pneuma, wind, breath, spirit, same word. I could do a whole study on just that alone, right? So, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Um, I believe man was created on the sixth day, and this is just kind of telling you what happened. Some people will say, oh, okay, well, God rested on the seventh day, so now God's making uh, Adam on the eighth day. I can understand why they believe that, and I won't say they're wrong. I will not do that. I, it's very possible. But uh, I personally, I think the Lord created us on the sixth day. Um, because if you look in Revelation, when it talks about, uh, you know, a man's number, you know, 666, uh, that's why I tend to believe that. You know, sometimes the Bible doesn't exactly always go in chronological or timely order. Sometimes it jumps around a bit. Uh, Book of Revelation is a perfect example of that. So, all right. So, everything up to this point, God created everything, and everything up to this point is good. All right. Keep that in mind. Everything is good. Now, somewhere, there's going to be a fall. Fall of man, fall of Satan. All of Satan's angels. Yeah, we're going to get all get to all that. All right, let's go to skip on down. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. And the Lord and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. First man was a gardener. Did you know that? Oh yeah. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou, may free, may, thou mayest freely eat. Now, if you look into the Bible carefully, sometimes the word tree refers to a plant may, that has wood. And then other times, a tree can... Well, sometimes tree is a reference to Family trees. You ever heard of that expression? Uh, your family tree. You know, your mother, father, grandmother, grandfathers. Yeah. Sometimes the Bible talks about family trees. So what is it here? 
of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, now wait a minute, we just read a few minutes ago that God looked at everything he'd made and it was good. But now there's a, a tree that has knowledge of good and evil? Wait a minute, God, God said he looked upon everything he had made and it was very good. Where did this evil come from? Huh? What? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's going to take it's going to take a little while, but we'll get to it. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now, a lot of this information I've covered in previous uh, Bible studies, but I'm going to do a different slant on it. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Oh boy, here comes trouble. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So let's skip down to 21. And the Lord God caused a sleep, deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Wow, anesthesia, I guess, uh, would be the modern idea, right? And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And uh, so it's funny. The first woman came from a man. But then after that, every man comes from a woman when he's born, right? Hmm. God said a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh at least that was the original idea but uh modern society doesn't believe that so verse 24 therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh oh yeah and they were both naked the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Um, I am suspecting that they had, well, it says they were naked. It means they were free from sin. Created in the image of God. You know, back in uh, Revelation, when they go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, they have white robes given unto them for the marriage, washed in Christ's own blood. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So, let's go to chapter 3. Now, Adam was told, don't you, don't you dare eat of that forbidden thing, that, that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't do it. Because the day you do it, you're going to die. Chapter 3, Genesis. Now the serpent, and we're going to take a look at Revelation 12, which clearly tells you what the serpent was. And it wasn't a snake with vocal cords talking. Uh-uh. That's what they want you to think, but uh, no. When you look at that word serpent, it uh, in the in the Hebrew it has reference to enchanter, like a saucer, somebody with magical abilities and powers. We're going to get to that too, Job chapter one. Now the serpent was more subtle; he was slick. He was more, was more subtle than any beast of the field. 
which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? See, very first thing recorded out of the mouth of the devil is he's questioning God's word. I mean, do you notice that? First thing out of his mouth. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Do you know the word fruit can refer to something that you consume for nourishment? And sometimes fruit refers to children, depending upon the context. Oh, yeah. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Oh, yeah. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Don't listen to that God guy. He's, he's, no. Don't listen to him. See, the first thing Satan does, he questions God's word, and then he lies about it. Oh, God said you're going to die? No, you won't. Uh-uh, girl. He, no, forget it. Yeah, he don't, he, he's lying to you. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know, if you take the word evil, E-V-I-L, and put a capital D in front of it, what do you got? Devil. Devil. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if that's a coincidence. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Hmm. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves Aprons. What do aprons cover? Why didn't they make a veil over their mouths? Hmm? We need to take a look at some words here. So what is this tree stuff? All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 31. And, you know, you go to most churches so-called, well, they call themselves churches, but Really, most of them are 501c3, IRS regulation, um, tax-exempt businesses with the name church in it. You will notice they hardly ever will preach out of the Old Testament. You know, oh, well, we're New Testament churches. Mm, no, you're not. You're a bunch of liars for the most part so but um isaiah and ezekiel are so sadly neglected in the the church and i did an entire bible study on isaiah but yeah what can i tell you it's on a playlist all right ezekiel chapter 31 verse 1 31, 1. And it came to pass in the 11th year, in the third month, 
in the first day of the month that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, So the Lord's speaking to Ezekiel, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Verse 3. Behold, the Assyrian, remember they had the Assyrian Empire. Uh, the Assyrian Empire in um, the days of Solomon's son, when Israel split off from Judah, you had the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, the Assyrians took uh, Israel, northern Israel, into captivity. God was mad at them and let, them, let the Assyrians take them away. They also took part of Judah. The Assyrians were also besieging Jerusalem. Yeah, they were, uh, they were ready to knock down the walls and take it. They took a large part of Judah into captivity too. And you got people that'll, uh, well, they, they don't know that um, when Babylon came, they conquered the Assyrians' army, and then all the Hebrew Israelite slaves, well, they took off. They're like, man, we've been enslaved by um, the Assyrians all these years, and now the, the Babylonians are coming. We better get out of here. So what did they do? They went north. Yeah. They went from Assyria, passed through what is modern-day Turkey, and went north into Europe. But that was another Bible study I did. And because a lot of those people settled in what is modern-day Germany, the... Um, Oh, who are those people? I forget what group it is. Oh, the Christ Adelphians. Uh, yeah, they'll tell you that the Germans are the Assyrians. Uh, I don't think so. If anything, they're Judah. Because Judah was to be first in war. And kings were to be... Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. And if you look at all the European royalty... Virtually all of them were from Germanic extraction. And if you look at old Germanic alphabets and compare it with Hebrew, they look very similar. And I was in Germany in the army, and when I started studying Hebrew in Bible college and started listening to the words, sounds a lot like German. So... I don't know. Verse 3. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar. What is a cedar? It's a tree. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. This is called a figure of speech. You know, guy goes to the beach, girl's wearing a bikini, very attractive, and he goes, whoa, look at her, man. What a fox. Is she a four-legged Dog-like creature with a tail? No. Figure of speech, okay? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Trees have branches, right? And with a shadowing shroud and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her Rivers running round about his plants, his plants, P-L-A-N-T-S, and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees, the trees of the field. Hmm. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bowels were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of the waters, when he shot forth. 
All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Let's take a break here and look up waters. Well, here's a good one. Ezekiel 19.10 Thy mother is like a vine, V-I-N-E, you know, like a grapevine, in thy blood, planted by the waters. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. Hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at the book of Revelation. All right, waters. Revelation 17 and verse 15. And he said, saith unto me, the waters, W-A-T-E-R-S, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Sometimes waters are talking about people. All right, let's go back to... Uh, Ezekiel 31, verse 5. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, the Assyrian, and his boughs were multiplied and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his nation dwelt, and, I'm sorry, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Hmm. The cedars in the garden of God, remember, the Assyrian was a cedar. The cedars in the Garden of God. Is this the Garden of Eden? The cedars in the Garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden was like unto him in his beauty. Hmm... I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Now, let me ask you a question. How do trees in a garden of God, how do they have envy? Envy is a human emotion. Trees do not have emotions. This is a figure of speech. Sometimes trees are family trees. Sometimes waters are people. Hmm. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Hmm. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Hmm. So are we talking about a tree? with fruit or are we talking about a being that's pleasant to the eyes to be desired to make one wise and what about fruit hmm are we talking about 
something that grows on trees or are we talking about something else? We always have to go to the Bible, the King James or the Geneva, because the Bible will explain the Bible if you let it. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 20. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 20. Remember, he took of the fruit and did eat. Remember that. Proverbs 30, 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Why is it talking about an adulterous woman? You're talking about a married woman. She eats, she wipes her mouth, and she says, I've done nothing wrong. Let that sink in when you're reading Genesis chapter 3. Hmm. You know, if you handed, I don't, if you got children in the room listening to this, may I suggest you pause right here and uh, let them take a break for a couple minutes and we'll get back to it. All right. Let me ask you a question. If a guy went up to a lady of the night, a hooker, with a handful of $100 bills and asked her, he wanted her to eat, do you think she would understand what he's asking for? Uh, no, I don't think he's inviting her to dinner at Denny's or, you know, uh, Chipotle or Burger King, right? Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Hmm. So, yeah. All right, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, let's stop right there. I want to, what do you mean pleasant to the eyes? All right, let's take a look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. See what I mean? There's a lot of hidden knowledge in the Bible. And, you know, it's not secret knowledge. I don't claim to have any secret knowledge. But the Lord, the Lord, if you take a shovel and dig, you're going to uncover a lot of things. But if you just read it superficially, you know, the Lord will give you what you can, well, if you just look on the surface, that's what he'll give you. In James chapter 1, it says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And that's what you should do. You should get on your hands and knees, ask the Lord for understanding. He'll give it to you. Now, if you read Matthew 13, Jesus is talking to the multitudes and he's speaking to them in parables. Okay? And then in verse 10, Matthew 13, 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Hey, uh, Jesus, why, why are you always talking to everybody in parables? What's the deal? Verse 11, he, Jesus, answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. The Lord reveals his secrets, the mysteries, to his people, but to the multitude it's not given. Now that is the exact opposite of what teaches, te uh, 
so-called churches teach. Most churches, so-called, will tell you, oh, well, Jesus talked in parables because he wanted to, you know, these were simple people and he wanted to explain things to them simply in everyday life with a heavenly meaning. So, you know, that's why he spoke in parables, because he wanted to keep it simple so they would understand. But that's not what Jesus said. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. First, whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. They can see and they can hear, but they're blind and they're deaf spiritually. Physically, nothing wrong with their eyes, nothing wrong with their ears, but spiritually they're blind and deaf. For in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your, hear, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Think about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, smart and good looking. Is this talking about a mere man? Verse 13 and 14 will tell you, and 15. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden. You've been in Eden? Yeah. Yeah. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. What human, before he was born, was in the garden of God, in, in Eden? This is not talking about a man. This is talking about an angel. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was I covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Those are at least some of the gemstones for the breastplate that the high priest would wear in the temple. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's in the book of Leviticus. Listen to this. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, we're talking about musical instruments here, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, we're talking about wind instruments, you ever heard of bagpipes or flutes? Uh, you know, wind instruments. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Not born. Created. Not born. So this being is full of wisdom, perfect in beauty, was in the Garden of Eden, and was created, not born. Who's this talking about? It's good. Oh, oh, verse 14. Oh, okay, here we go. Thou art, 
the anointed cherub. A cherub is a, a type of angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I believe this was one of the cherubs or angels that covered the throne of God. You ever heard of the mercy seat? Uh, you know, you people watch Indiana Jones, the, what was it, Lost Ark of the Raiders of the Earth, Lost Ark or whatever that blasphemy was. You had two angels and their wings were covering the Ark of the Covenant, the throne of God. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I, the Lord, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect. Remember, God said everything that he had made was very good. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity, wickedness, sin, evil, until iniquity was found in thee. Wow. He was perfect, and then he fell. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee out as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Wow. Thine heart was lifted up. Pride, people. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Remember, eh? uh, Satan's called an angel of light. Brightness. Keep that in mind. We're going to get to this. And I will cast thee to the ground. Uh, well, I don't, yeah, read Revelation chapter 12. We're going we're gonna to read Revelation chapter 12. He was cast out of heaven, right? I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. Iniquity is sin, wickedness, people. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire, hell fire, lake of fire. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, terror, T-E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, and never shalt thou be any more. Wow. Did you notice this creature is, uh, well, wisdom, beauty, but it's also associated with music. I wonder, I believe that Satan was uh, the music minister. Did you ever wonder why um, the music industry is satanic? Uh, just a coincidence, right? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go take a look back at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6 again. So, well, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, now remember, Jesus called himself the bread of life. Isn't bread food? You could eat of the tree of good, or you can eat of the tree of evil. Take your pick. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for 
food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Remember, perfect in beauty, perfect in beauty, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat fruit. Now, what about fruit? Uh, it has several shades of meaning. Deuteronomy 28, 11. And the Lord God shall make thee plenteous and goods in the fruit of thy body, children, and the fruit of thy cattle. I'm sorry, cattle do not produce apples, oranges, and bananas. No. What is the fruit of cattle? More cattle. And in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Hosea 9.16 Ephraim is smitten. Their root, their family tree, their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Who is Ephraim? He was the a brother of Manasseh from Joseph. Joseph was one of the 12 tribes of Israel from Jacob Israel. Ephraim is smitten. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Yea, though they bring forth, yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. A woman's womb is where children comes from. Hmm. Fruit of the body, fruit of the womb. Jesus speaking in Matthew 12, 33, he said, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Oh, yeah. In the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12, well, there's only one chapter, verse 12, these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. What do you mean twice dead? Dead spiritually, dead physically, twice dead. Oh, yeah. Oof. In John 15, 16, Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. See, sometimes fruit refers to nourishment. Other times it refers to our works. Sometimes it refers to children. In Proverbs 13, I'm sorry, 11, 30, 11 and verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Hmm, fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Compare that to the tree of good and evil. And he that winneth souls is wise. Oh, yeah. In Galatians 5.22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. The fruit of the Spirit. So sometimes fruit is works. Sometimes fruit is children. Sometimes fruit is something you eat with your mouth and swallow into your stomach. In Micah 17, 7 and 13, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. 
Sometimes fruit is your doings or your works, the things that you do. Psalms 127 verse 3. Lo, children are an inheritance of the Lord. Children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. No wonder Satan wants us to abort our children. Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. How about uh, Jeremiah 6 and verse 19? Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. You know, people, this could be modern day Europe or America or, you know, yeah. Genesis 3, 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Hmm. Matthew 3, 10. Now also the axe is laid, axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Can we get a spiritual application of that? Hmm. Now, well, who is the serpent talking to Eve in Genesis 3? Well, Revelation 20 tells you exactly who the serpent is. Verse 1. Revelation 20 and verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, that old serpent, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. What? And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Huh. I mean, does it get any plainer than that? Can you get any clearer than that? Hmm. All right. Did we read about the violence in heaven in Ezekiel? Oh, yeah, we did. Is there a New Testament uh, second witness? Absolutely. Revelation chapter 12. And I did a entire commentary on Revelation 12. This is a powerful chapter, people. Powerful. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And I did a thing on this. Um, this actually comes from Joseph's dream when he's in prison. Oh, no, he wasn't in prison. Uh, it was his dream when he was in the, uh, before he went to Egypt with his parents and his brethren. So, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold, a great red dragon, a dragon, didn't we just read about the dragon? That old serpent called the devil and Satan? Uh, yeah. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Remember, this dragon is full of wisdom and beauty. Perfect in beauty, God said. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven mmm stars what are these stars revelation 120 
The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Oh, okay. That's what stars are. Okay. Revelation 12, 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And obviously this is talking about uh, Mary and Christ. Verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. This is the tribulation, people. Let me tell you something. When the you-know-who's in the Middle East, build a temple and start doing animal sacrifices in Jerusalem, pay close attention. As soon as somebody appears with a false prophet that's doing all kinds of miracles and goes into the temple of God and shows himself that he's God, and we're going to go into that, as soon as you see that, Matthew 24 tells you, flee to the mountains. Don't go back to the house and grab your stuff. When they build a temple and start doing animal sacrifices, I suggest you have what some call a bug out bag or uh, a survival kit or survival bag and run like hell. That's all I can tell you. Run like hell because hell on earth is coming. Because one day, the man of sin is going to appear. We're going to cover that in Revelation. Uh, we'll cover. I'm going to cover that in my next study. This is almost an hour. So, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. I'm of the opinion that God is going to provide water and manna to his wilderness church. But we'll see. Verse 7. And there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. The dragon and his angels, they didn't prevail. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Evil, evil with a capital D in front of it, devil. Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, I think that's what Satan means as accuser. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Do you love your life here on the earth? I don't. There was a time I loved my life on this earth, but not anymore. Honestly, I don't even want to be here anymore. But, hey, what can I tell you? Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food... And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Hmm. Perfect in beauty. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. 
She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Remember, fruit can mean works. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them were both opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. And again I ask you, what are you covering with an apron? Hmm, what are they covering with an apron? Huh. Proverbs 30 and verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. You know, the Bible explains the Bible. You think if there's a talking snake hanging from an apple tree, well, that's what the devil wants you to think. But uh, I don't think so. So this is going to be the end of part one. More to come. And you know what, people? Let me tell you something. I'm already one step away from being banned across social media, socialist media. So I may as well go out with a bang. And that's what we're going to do. So, and like I've said before, if any of you want my Bible studies on a SD card or a USB drive, contact me. Let me know. I mean, come on. Uh, my information is not going to be out there forever. But um, I'm going to, I think what I'm going to start part two on is... Um, what to do when the time comes when the man of sin appears. And I know I've covered a lot of the same information before, but I'm doing it from a different angle. And uh, not everybody is, you know, familiar with my old work. So, you know, there's already laws on the books in the United States, the EU, Canada, where they're going to make the Bible illegal for hate speech and, uh, you know, our aunt semi tism. Yeah. Yeah. Y y you know, people, it's, it's getting to be real. I mean, it's just absolutely, people have no idea. So, all right, uh, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, and uh, guess what? This is the end of part one. And, you know, let the Bible explain the Bible. Get on your hands and knees. Ask the Lord for wisdom and understanding. And, uh, you know, that's why they want to get you away from the King James and tell you, oh, you're in a King James only cult. Because they want you to use the NIV Bible, or which was the number one bestseller for at least one or two years going. And the NIV Bible is printed by the parent company of the joy of G-A-Y, sex, a how-to pictorial manual on how to, yeah, and they also, uh, the parent company also prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. Yeah. You want to trust your Bible from a company that prints Satanic literature and how to be um, G, A, and uh, give me a Y? Oh, I know why, because they're Satanists. Yeah. So, yeah, the NIV is... Uh, Exclusive print rights by that particular group. Yeah, no thanks. Oh, and they'll tell you, oh, well, the King James is printed by those people too. Well, that's true, but anybody can print the King James. I can go to FedEx Kinko's and print the King James Bible. But if I do that with the NIV, I will be sued for copyright infringement. 
So only they can print the NIV. Anybody can print the King James, at least in the United States. You know, in the in the UK, uh, that's a different story, but we're not in the UK. You know, that's why uh, we, uh, we kicked them out, you know. We got tired of, uh, we got tired of their crap, so uh, we told them, go take a hike. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.